you a bit stiff that old Yorkshire geek and I'm back with some more news there's a disembodied voice once again uh, but I'm feeling better today so anyway uh, this time Ridley Scott uh, is talking about 2001 A Space Odyssey uh, and how it's an act of genius but I think we could have told him that but uh, from Stanley Kubrick uh, this article's from Screen Rant uh, Bella Garcia is reporting so let's have a look at this article but first before we start uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, because we're so close to a thousand subscribers. We're so close. Uh, like and subscribe, share the videos, drop a comment, hit the notification bell if you subscribed already. Explore the description for links of various stuff, social medias, um, Patreon, merch, and all that stuff. Uh, become a member. Uh, join join the the the, uh, the channel. Become a member. You'll see exclusive videos and early access videos. Um, and yes, I'm going to do some more soon. <laughs> uh, what else? What else? Oh, I super thanks. I keep forgetting about that. Um, throw some money in my general direction in the form of super thanks. That would be nice. Right. So let's have a look at this article, shall we? As I said, it's from Screen Rant. There it is. Uh, Ridley Scott explains why Stanley Kubrick's greatest movie of all time is an act of genius. I think that's a bit subjective, isn't it? But it is a good film. I do like 2001. Uh, and if you didn't realise it was 2001, that's a big, massive clue is that picture there, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, right. Director Ridley Scott lords 2001 A Space Odyssey as a remarkable feat, calling director Stanley Kubrick's, uh, if I can say it properly, innovative or in innovative I went, oh, God, what am I like with pronunciations? Anyway, portrayal of artificial intelligence, both visionary and cautionary. Scott, a renowned director, who I think is slightly overrated. I think he's good, but he's good at directing and putting a vision on screen. But I just hate that he's, when he's involved creatively in the writing, that's what gets on my nerves with Ridley Scott. But anyway... And he loves the smell of his own cigar farts. Anyway, Scott, a renowned director known for influential sci-fi films like Blade Runner and Alien and the upcoming Gladiator 2, which people are kind of raving about, aren't they? Saying it's really, really good. A lot of people say, this is a film nobody asked for, but they're saying it's going to be really good. But anyway. Has long been a fan of 2001. It is known for its groundbreaking visual effects and often considered one of the greatest achievements in cinematic history. I wouldn't go that far. But it is a good film. I do like watching it. 2001 explores humanity's relationship with technology, centering on HAL 9000, an AI who goes rogue, who doesn't really... It's explained in 2010, but anyway. An AI who goes rogue and risks the livelihood of its space crew on a harrowing journey towards Jupiter. In a recent interview with Collider, Scott elaborated on his admiration for one of his all-time favourite movies, particularly noting how 2001 predicts the complex role AI could play in society. Uh, Kubrick's depiction of AI, although they get it a, bit, a few years in advance, don't they? Because as I said, this film's set in 2001, um, where humanity has advanced a bit more quickly than we did in real life, but anyway. I think Hal was first turned on in the 1980s, I think it says in the film. Uh, but anyway. Kubrick's depiction of AI foreshadows a future in which advanced artificial intelligence could potentially seize control in ways humanity might struggle to prevent. For Scott, the film remains both a cinematic and philosophical achievement that urges caution as humanity expands the boundaries of technology, underscoring the enduring relevance of 2001 A Space Odyssey, more than five decades after its release. Read the full quote here. Well, shall we just do that? I think we will. Quote. Uh, I think... I bet he's got a big cigar in his mouth, probably, as he's, as he's saying this. I think Kubrick did the film that predetermines everything by 50 years with AI. He did 2001. Brackets. A Space Odyssey. I think we know that. <laughs> 2001 is an act of genius because it warns us what happens if we allow AI into our universe. It will take over, and all it has to do is switch cell phones, in brackets again, off. I don't know what he said there. Obviously, they've used cell phones as a um, uh, a replacement for something else, he said. I wonder what he said. Maybe he said mobile phones. I don't know, because that's what we say in the UK. 
and he's British after all. But anyway, and you've got chaos. Uh, it could switch off. Uh, it could switch that off for fun. If I'm gonna design an AI, I'm gonna say, okay, the first job for you is I want you to design another AI smarter than you are. By the time you're done with that, we're in deep shit. That's what he says in that accent as well, even though he's from the northeast of England. But never mind. They should be going, why, I man, I think Kubrick did a film, I man. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Uh, what Ridley Scott praise for 2001 Space Odyssey means, right? What's he going to say? And there's images, there's images from the film. Uh, I think that's probably David Bowman, the commander of the uh, odd, uh, Discovery mission to Jupiter. There he is with uh, Frank, Frank Bowman. I think it's Frank Bowman. Uh, played by Gary Mitchell. I know it's not. It's, um, I, forget, I can never remember the name of the actor. Um, I can never remember the name of the actor. Anyway, we were in Star Trek with Gary Mitchell. Uh, but, you know, they were idiots because they were talking away. They turned off the uh, radio so that Hal couldn't hear them. But they found that if they did not turn the pod round, Hal wouldn't have been able to see him speaking because Hal could lip read. Spoilers. So they're talking about maybe switching Hal off uh, because he made a mistake. Uh, and there's the monolith. This is from the end of the film, isn't it? When it all gets a ball bit weird, arty farty. Anyway, oh, and this is from the beginning of the film with the, the cool effects uh, of the, the the ship that's taking um, Doctor um, Floyd to the uh, to the moon. Well, first to the space station and then to the moon, and she's. Uh, Showing how the zero gravity, so she's using like Velcro grip shoes. They call them grip shoes, to just to walk round and and, and uh, defy gravity, so to speak. Anyway, and I love the displays. That's it. Preempted flat screens, didn't it? I think what it was. I think how they did it. That's it. I don't think flat screens have been invented then. They're still cathode ray tubes and stuff. I think they were projected, you know, onto onto flat, you know screens, you know what I mean, like a cinema screen so I think they'll re projected onto that I think you know, rather than being actual TV screens but it's cool, cool screens I'm, I'm waffling out, anyway, whatever right, Scott's reverence we'll, we'll probably be, we'll probably do 2001 in Magnificent Mondays one day Scott's reverence for 2001 A Space Odyssey is a testament to its eternal status as a profound meditation on artificial intelligence and its capacity to surpass human control Kubrick's creation of HAL 9000, the onboard AI, well, it wasn't really Kubrick's creation, it was, you know, don't forget Arthur C. Clarke, he wrote the bugger. Uh, the onboard AI, which begins to subvert the mission pilot's commands and endanger the human crew, has since become a cautionary symbol of AI's potential to be more of a detriment than an aid to human evolution. But if you watch 2010, Odyssey 2, the year we make contact, whatever subtitle you want to give it, we find out that HAL were um, trapped in some weird uh, loop of logic where he were given full knowledge of the mission because it was a secret mission. Because uh, originally the, Odys um, the Discovery was going to Jupiter uh, for a completely different reason than, than um, what the crew thought, uh, well, what the pilots thought. Um, they thought it was just a, a mission to, to Jupiter for, you know, I don't know, some research or whatever. But they were going to find the um, the monolith or find out what the signal was uh, that the monolith on the moon were transmitting uh, to Jupiter. Um, and only the crew, only the scientists that were put in suspended animation, they knew what the mission was. But the two crew, the two pilots, they didn't know. Uh, but Hal knew, but he was told not to tell the pilots, David and Frank, um, about the mission, and it kind of, it caused a weird um, uh, logical loop in his brain, in his AI. Um, so he uh, he basically just killed <laughs> killed the the suspended animators, killed all the crew, tried to kill the crew, and um, uh, because he, he was told to lie. And he didn't know how to handle it. But that's what he did. So he just thought, right, I'll just do the mission myself. Anyway, Scott's remarks. So it wasn't really, you know, the it, it were his orders from humans that had created the problem, not the AI itself. 
anyway. Scott's remarks reflect his belief that 2001 isn't just a film with unparalleled visual achievements for its time, but a cultural warning, a call to seriously consider the implications of empowering artificial intelligence. Kubrick's 2001 pioneered the concept of AI with intentions potentially misaligned with humanity's welfare, a theme now central to modern sci-fi narratives and technological discourse. Scott's respect for 2001 as a predictive masterpiece aligns with his own filmography's cautious stance on AI, resonating particularly in works like Blade Runner, which explores this relationship through the lens of replicants, bioengineered beings designed to serve humans who possess their own emotions and desires. And I suppose you could also put alien in that because of, spoilers, uh, Ash. Uh, essentially were an AI. They were an android, weren't they? But, you know, it were an AI... It could reason and all that stuff. So it was an artificial intelligence, wasn't it? Uh, and that went wrong, didn't it, as well? Anyway, Scott's praise for 2001 speaks to the timelessness of Kubrick's vision. While technological advances bring society closer to true artificial intelligence, Scott's endorsement emphasises that Kubrick's work is not just historical speculation, but an increasingly relevant cautionary tale. 2001's portrayal of AI as a double-edged sword capable of immense intelligence and potentially catastrophic independence adds significant weight to ongoing discussions about AI's role in our world, with it being a major point of contention in the recent SAG-AFTRA and WGA strikes. But is it... You know, is it, is it, is it a, um, a commentary on artificial intelligence? Or is it just a commentary on intelligence in general and we don't really understand what intelligence is? Because um, there's human intelligence and then there's other sorts of intelligence, isn't there? Like animals and stuff like that that are always surprising us uh, with how intelligent animals can be. We always think of them as just acting on instinct and stuff like that. But then something will come along and, um, uh, and we'll see that you know, animals can be quite clever when they want to be. But uh, anyway... Uh, where were we? In today's world, where AI development has seeped into daily lives with access to preliminary language learning models such as ChatGPT, Scott's reflections on 2001 remind audiences that cinematic warnings like Kubrick's continue to resonate within a society grappling with similar wariness surrounding AI's ability to replace jobs in several industries. The themes in 2001 A Space Odyssey caution us to wear innovation against the ethical boundaries needed to keep humanity safe. Uh, so yeah, 2001 is an amazing film. Uh, I really like it. Uh, I actually saw it in the cinema uh, in probably 1978. I think they did the 10th anniversary re-release of it, so I was 11. And I went to see it at the cinema. And uh, although I don't think I really understood what was going on, I still thought it were cool. I still thought it were a cool film, and it had an intermission, and uh, and I still love stuff. Bring back intermissions. That's what I say for long films. Uh, dear. Film over two and a half hours needs an intermission, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, or three hours, whatever, whatever. Right. So anyway, um, so yeah, yeah. I, I think he's right. Cause I think AI uh, is kind of scary. Um, to, to our way of life, it's scary. Um, as I said, is it a, is it a discourse on on uh, artificial intelligence, or is it just a discourse on intelligence in general? Um, but uh, but whatever. But whatever, it it could it can be a danger to our way of life, um, or it may just enhance it even more. But uh, who knows? It depends how we use it and how we let it evolve. Um, if we do just let it evolve, AI, will it just naturally take over? That's the one of the questions, isn't it? Will there be nothing we can do about it? A bit like Skynet in Terminator. As soon as they switched it on, it essentially became self-aware, didn't it? And um, and started wiping out humanity, you know, in an instant, didn't it? Um, but uh, thankfully that hasn't happened yet. Uh, or has it? It's just taking its time and waving my arms about in a conspiratorial manner. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so there we go. So yes, watch 2001 and watch Blade Runner, a film that I didn't you. It's a film I don't love, but I admire Blade Runner. Um, but if I watch it, I do enjoy watching it. If I do, if I do watch it, 
I'm watching it more for the the film rather than the story of the film, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm watching it for the atmosphere and the effects and the music and the sound effects and all that stuff, rather than the, the story that's unfolding. I'm just breathing in that world that they've created in Blade Runner. Uh, but yeah, that's another one that uh, talks about uh, AI, i.e. the replicants. Um, and you could also put Alien in there, and Aliens, and all the other Alien films that have androids in, because they're AIs, aren't they? Um, but in, in Alien, the AI worked against the human crew, didn't it? But in Aliens, the, the AI was, was a good guy, so... And also Terminator. You've got Terminator as well. Speaking of James Cameron and Aliens, you've got Terminator as another AI, uh, which I just mentioned, haven't I? But um, uh, not just Skynet, but also the Terminators themselves, which are a form of AI. Uh, AI created by AI, uh, which is what Stanley Kubrick talks about. Not Stanley Kubrick, Ridley Scott talks about in his quote below. Um, it will AI will start creating its own AIs, we're doomed, aren't we? We're doomed. And I'm, I'm rambling. I'm rambling because it's scary. Anyway, we'll leave it there. We will leave it there. So, thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, don't forget to like and subscribe and share the comments and all that stuff. Subscribe and all that stuff. Right, we'll leave it there. So, thanks for watching. Wherever you are, look after each other. And until next time, I'll see the...